Whoop, I forgot to unmute the mic. All right. Hello. How you doing? My name is Steve Oatley. The show is called Five Minutes of Freight, where I try to break down the biggest news stories of the day in five minutes. Today, we're going to be focusing on trucking trade organizations it, or associations, rather, and some of the tasks that they choose to take on. We're going to talk about good and we're going to highlight the bad like we always do. It's going to be five minutes of fun news, so stay tuned. The first news story we're going to talk about today is one that I wrote yesterday. Uh, the title of this article, if you want to find it on my website, is FMCSA opens up commenting period for one of the most mind boggling requests we have seen so far. So and trust me, that is a very accurate title for this article. So the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration has asked for public comment on a petition for a five year exemption for small business freight brokers and forwarders from the seventy five thousand dollars thirty bond requirement currently required. And the reasoning behind this petition is essentially non-existent. So as most of you guys know, freight brokers are required to have a $75,000 freight broker bond, which is not there to guarantee payment from the shipper. It is to guarantee that a carrier that hauls a load for that broker is able to get paid. Because as you guys know, and as most independent carriers know, some brokers tend to not pay carriers in a timely fashion or at all. So the reason why they increased the bond in, in 2013 from $10,000 to $75,000 was to basically make the barrier of entry a little bit harder so that carrier or so that the scam artists wouldn't become brokers, pretend they're a big broker and get all these shipments and all this freight moved and not pay the carriers. As you guys know, as most independent operators and everybody know, we're still having an issue getting paid. Um, smaller carriers are having an issue getting paid on time because a lot of brokers, a lot of these independent brokers, a lot of the scam artist brokers are making it are basically hiring carriers to do stuff, getting paid from the shipper and then disappearing and stealing all the money essentially. But one trade organization and they call themselves a trucker trade organization that now this is very important because it's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. But one trucking trade organization decided that it wanted to attack freight dispatching companies, which I completely understand. I get that dispatching companies kind of hug that line of what's legal and not legal. Anyway, their their decision to deal with freight. Oh, my God. So what they want to do is they essentially want to eliminate the freight broker bond requirement for brokers that make under 15 million dollars a year. So what that does is it opens up the freight brokerage industry, which is already too there's too many bad people in it anyway but it opens it up so that <laughs> from now on or if this would pass which it never would pass that essentially freight brokers would be able to come in with just the license not have any bonding requirements and essentially steal all carrier money and have no recourse for the carrier to get paid part of the issue that people don't understand is if you don't fully understand the industry you should not be leading a trade organization the seventy five thousand dollar bond is currently not protecting a lot of small brokers or a lot of small carriers because for example if a carrier or if a broker owes $150,000 out in 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 bills and does not pay the car or the carriers when the carriers go to the bonding company to file on the claim the bonding company is going to see that they're that it's over $75,000 which is a bonding requirement so they are going to settle for in this case 50 cents uh, for every dollar that's owed essentially screwing over carriers now this is a trade organization the small business and transportation coalition who is putting this petition on i don't know it maybe it's a publicity stunt to try to just get in the news but it's really not smart it's kind of leads me to think or it, it affirms the belief that i have that people that don't know the industry should not be leading trade organizations that deal with the industry it's kind of it's kind of silly and and now we have another story which kind of is right around the same thing this is a, an opinion piece that I wrote yesterday that Federal Highway Administration, as we all know, okayed uh, food trucks to be in rest areas because drivers can't find a damn meal anywhere because everything is closed because of COVID-19. So <laughs> it, again, it's so silly. The NTSO, which is the only national trade organization that represents the travel plazas and truck stop industry, has over 17,000 or 17 
1,000 or 1,700 travel plazas and truck stops nationwide owned by over 200 corporate entities. Anyway, so after the Federal Highway Administration issued the notice to state departments of transportation suspending the enforcement measures against state to allow food trucks and rest stops, rest stops to feed truckers, the NATSO sent a letter to the Federal Highway Administration trying to shut that down, essentially saying that if they allow independent food trucks, which you guys got to understand that those are mothers or fathers, you know, sons, daughters, everybody, you know, independent food trucks, they wanted to shut it down or at least say, if you're going to allow food trucks, make sure it's in a rest area where there are no vending machines, where, where there are no other truck stop locations quickly because or, or anywhere close, because if there is, it will divert traffic from these truck stops. Keep in mind, truck stops typically inflate the, the price of fuel. I mean, you have to pay $2.50 for a candy bar in some of these places. You got to pay for showers. You got to pay for um, parking in some locations. It's literally just, a, again, one of the, the – it doesn't make any sense. I, I don't know. I wish I had a better answer on why uh, associations are choosing to fight with this. Because here's a thought. If the NATSO actually cared about the trucking industry and wanted to see it be successful – why don't they set up health clinics in these truck stops in their member clinics? So drivers that are driving on the road and, and delivering all this essential goods in hot zones would actually be able to get tested for the coronavirus and, and or medical issues. Why don't you eliminate paid parking and allow shower, uh, drivers to shower for free? Why don't you guys have, have you some of your member, your trade member organizations actually clean the showers, give free coffee to drivers, give discounts at, at your, 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 venues to increase traffic just as some other place have, has done but instead you want to just essentially say we want drivers to eat out of a vending machine instead of a hot meal does not make any sense and here's our third and final story of today and it goes right along with that so as i just kind of you know was talking negatively about two trade organizations here are two trade organizations here that are really going above and beyond in my opinion again this is an opinion show so i could say what i want the OIDA and ATA team up with the International Franchise Association to make sure drivers can eat on the road. Now, both the ATA and OIDA have released statements uh, about the truck stop organization from, from the previous article, which is kind of funny uh, because they both also thought it was probably one of the stupidest things they've ever heard in their life, too. But these trade organizations have partnered with the International Franchise Association that has members, you know, uh, fast food restaurant chains, any franchise restaurant that, you know, they have a lot of members. And they've, they've worked out deals and discounts and put together a list, which is on my website, of restaurants that are offering either discounts or just paying homage to truck drivers or letting, them, letting drivers know they can get in there and how they can order food. Um, that art, article is on my website. And it's very cool. Some of the restaurants that are included are Firehouse Subs, Fuzzo, Fuzzies, Taco Shop, Long John Silver's, McDonald's, and Nathan's, Hot Dogs, Ruby Tuesdays, Sho Shoney's or Shoney's, I don't know how you say it, and Sonic Restaurant. And, and probably there's going to be a lot more once publicity gets out. If it does, hopefully it does. Anyway, this has been five minutes of freight the only talk show that is run by an active freight broker someone who works in the industry loves the industry and cares about it that's why i highlight the idios in in today that like the the silly stuff in the industry um make sure you tune in at two o'clock eastern time today for my live show and uh we'll go from there see you guys later happy trucking Whoop.